Good afternoon and welcome to Ocean Exploration. Today is the virtual Excel camp for early elementary. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you all with us today. This is the APH virtual Excel camp for early elementary and this week is ocean exploration. You are welcome to type in the chat or have mom or dad type in the chat for you who you are and where you're from. We'd love to say hi to you. Our instructors today are Leslie McNeil, a teacher of students with visual impairments, and Jessica Kaminsky, another teacher of students with visual impairments, both out of Georgia. Hello, Leslie. Hi, everyone. Happy to have you here today. Hello, Jessica. Hey, glad you could join us. Welcome, Sophia. Welcome, Giselle. We're glad to have you with us today. I am going to turn it over to your instructors and off we go for exploration of that ocean. It's all yours, Jessica. <laughs> Welcome, Naomi. Hello, Alicia. So Glad to go ahead. I was going to say today we went over our introductions and we're going to look at our schedule and first up on our schedule it looks like we have a really cool book about tough Boris. Leslie do you know anything about tough Boris? I think tough Boris was a pirate and are pirates still around today? I don't think the same kind of pirates are still around. I heard there are pirates, but I don't think they wear those big hats and I don't think they go around searching for treasure. Ah, oh, looks like uh, Tough Boris is reading a map with his, with his parrot on his shoulder. Well, oh, and if you look at his chin, he has lots of little prickly hairs on his chin. He's very scruffy. It looks like he needs to shave. I usually tell my husband he's scruffy when he gets to a point where he needs to shave. And it also looks like he has on an earring, a very large gold earring in his ear, and a bandana. Oh, and Leslie, he has a hat like yours. Ah, a three-corner hat. A three-corner hat, yes, that's nice. And he has on a red trench coat, which is a long coat. The long sleeves and it has gold buttons. Oh, and it looks like he has a friend. He has a pet. Some type of bird, maybe a parrot. Looks like a parrot. Parrots are very colorful and you usually find them on tropical islands. Hey guys, have any of you ever dressed up as a pirate or read a book about a pirate? If, if so, put it in the chat for us. No chats yet, Miss Jessica. Well, that's fun because I know someone who has dressed up like a pirate before. I have, Miss Jessica. Have you? I have. I go to a place called Pirate Fest where everybody dressed up like pirates. Oh, I see some chats. Let me check this. Ingram, Ingrid says no. Has not ever read a book about pirates. Have you read any books about pirates other than Tough Boris, Miss Leslie? I read Treasure Island, where these pirates go on a treasure hunt. It was pretty good. Sydney says that she has not either, or he has not. All right, Miss Jessica, I think we're ready to begin. There's lots of no's, so we're going to have to give some good descriptions here for everyone. Sydney is a she. I'm so sorry, Sydney. We're ready, Miss Jessica. So this book was written by Mim Fox, and it's called Tough Boris, and it's illustrated by Katherine Brown. And on the cover, it shows a rowboat, which is a small boat that you use oars or paddles to um, 
that the pirates would take from their big ships. They would take a little rowboat to the small island so they wouldn't have to dock their big ships. And it's got a flag and the flag is black and it has a symbol on it of a skull and crossbones, which the pirates call a Jolly Roger. And then above them is the parrot, which I assume is Boris's friend. The next page is a dedication page, which means they tell who they dedicated the book for. And it says for Alexa and Helen, and of course, Paul Von Borch. And that's from the author. And then the illustrator said for Parker, Sawyer, Will, Levi, and Amos. So they wrote these, this book for some special people in mind. And on this page, we see a large cliff, which is a rock or like a mountain. At the top, there's a boy sitting and with no shoes on. And he's looking out over the sea and there's some seagulls flying around. And in the distance, we see a great big pirate ship. And pirate ships are very large ships. And this one has three long poles that stick up called masts and lots of sails, which are the um, sheets on the boat or the fabric that catches the waves and sets the boat, um, makes the boat sail or makes the boat go fast. Once upon a time, there was a pirate named Boris von der Borch. In this picture, we see a pirate and he's got, you know, he kind of looks a little scary, maybe a little mean. And he's got a bird on his arm and they are looking at a map and pirates are known for looking for treasure. So he's probably looking at a treasure map, going to find some treasure. And in the distance, we see some other pirates and they are climbing up a hill of sand with shovels and the Jolly Red Roger flag. He was tough. All pirates are tough. So in the picture, you'll see that most of the pirates kind of have mean faces, like they're not smiling, their mouths are closed, their eyebrows are furrowed, which means their eyebrows are close together, and they're not looking very happy because they're trying to look tough, and their arms are crossed, and in the picture, some of the pirates are digging up a treasure chest that has been buried in the sand and it has a lock and ropes on it. So I bet it's full of nice treasure. They have big muscles too, Miss Jessica. They definitely, that's probably why they're so tough. On this page it says he was massive. All pirates are massive. Massive is a is a is a big word for that means big it means he was tall and maybe had lots of muscles he was massive he was really really big and in the picture you see um tough boris and he is standing and he's taller than the other pirates and he looks to be feeding his bird a cracker his parrot while the other pirates are climbing aboard the pirate ship and bringing up the treasure that they just found On the next page, it says he was scruffy. All pirates are scruffy. So as me and Miss Leslie were telling you before, when, um, when men, older men, don't shave, they get hairs that kind of stick out on their face and they can be really rough when they touch them. Like if um, some of you may have a dad and in the evenings when you go and you touch his face, it might be really rough because he hasn't shaved, that's when you're scruffy. So these guys have lots of hair sticking up on their face. In the first picture, it looks like they're wrestling, trying to um, get some treasure. And in the next one, they find a case. And inside the case is a violin. And they're looking at the violin. On this page, you see, uh, in our way. Sorry. He was greedy. So when it means to be greedy, it means that you want 
to keep everything for yourself and you don't want to share with other people. So in the picture, you see that they have pulled the treasure chest onto the ship and they have it open. And they are dumping out some gold coins. So it looks like they found a lot of good stuff in that treasure chest. And I bet Boris will not want to share. All pirates are greedy. Now, in the first picture, you see tough Boris and he's sitting in a chair and he's looking at that violin that they found in the treasure chest. And he's looking at it very carefully and his bird is on his shoulder and the bird is looking at it too. And the next picture you will see, uh-oh, tough Boris is asleep in his bed and the bird is in the cage and someone has reached through Boris's window and taken his violin. Since all pirates are greedy, I don't think this is going to make tough Boris very happy at all. So tough Boris goes into the room and he is not very happy because they took his violin and he's showing them the empty, some other pirates, the empty violin box. And he looks like he's asking them, what did you do with my violin? And the bird is flying out the window. He was fearless. All pirates are fearless. So in this picture, you see all the pirates are on the deck, which is um, above water. And they are looking everywhere for the violin. And then you see below deck, which there's, um, it's like when you live in a first story or a two story house and you have a first story and a second story, all the pirates would be looking on the second story. And this little boy has gone down to the first story or the below deck and he has the violin in his hand. So it looks like he took the violin and the bird is following him into the room. So the bird knows the little boy took the violin. I hope Boris doesn't find out. On the next page, you see Boris and he's listening carefully at the door. So he has his ear pressed against a door. And in the other room, the little boy sitting on sitting and he is playing the violin. And Boris comes in and he looks very angry. He's got his sword in the air and he is not happy at all. He was scary. All pirates are scary. So now the little boy who's very small compared to the other pirates is playing the violin while all the other pirates, including tough Boris, are watching them. But they don't look very happy. When you are fearless, it means you're not scared of anything. But I think we're going to find something out about tough Boris. But when his parrot died, and it shows an ocean, and it's storming, and there's lots of big waves, and the pirate ship. Boris is sitting in a chair, and he's looking down at his bird, and the little boy, he's got his head down, and he's by the door. And in the next picture, they're both looking at the bird laying in the violin box. And now you see Boris and he's got a very sad face. His lips are turned down, his face is turned down and he cried and cried. So I guess Boris wasn't as mean and tough after all because he actually loves that bird. And in the next picture, you see him and the little boy standing by the end of the boat. And so did I. Oh, all pirates cry. And in here, you see the first 
you see the pirate's boat, the big ship, and there are five pirates, and they look very sad, and they're looking out at the water, and in the rowboat, you have tough Boris, the little boy, and then a pirate that's rowing, and they're all looking very sad. And then they take the little boy and they leave him on shore with his violin. And he said, and so did I. And in the distance, you see the pirate ship sailing away. So in this story, we kind of talked about tough Boris. But Boris really wasn't as tough as he w people thought he was. He may have looked scruffy and he may have looked scary and he may have been greedy but really he was very sweet and he liked listening to music and he loved his little bird have you ever met a tough boris leslie i have i've met a few tough forests in my career and they all turned out to be caring and kind they just put on the perception or the facade or the appearance of being tough. I think sometimes we all pretend to be tough, even when we're not, even when we might be scared. Sometimes we pretend to be tough and that's okay. But just because someone looks like they might be mean and tough or talk with a scruffy voice, doesn't mean they're actually mean. They could be very nice people. All right, Miss Jessica. Uh, Nathaniel said that he's read Peter Pan. Oh, with Captain Hook. That's a great pirate. Yeah. That's, um, I do like that. That's about all the other ones that you got, Miss Jessica. But uh, back one, Miss Jessica, please. We got to talk about echolocation, right? I'm not off. Sorry. I do. I don't know how the slide jumped from there to there. So we're going to uh, have a discussion, right? All right, guys. We were. So yesterday, your task was to do the echolocation experiment. So did anyone ever do the echolocation experiment? Oh, and Ingrid added that they've read Peter Pan as well. Sydney said uh, she did not get a chance to do the echolocation experiment. Remember yesterday we talked about that dolphins use echolocation, bats use echolocation, and some students when they're getting their orientation and mobility lessons, they're um, taught some echolocation activities. Alicia has her hand raised. Did you make it, Alicia? No. Not yet? Mm -mm. Okay. Any, Alicia, any thoughts on the pirate story that we read today? Well, I did read some pirate stories, but mm, no, I don't have any thoughts. Okay. Have you ever read the book, Pirates Don't Change Diapers? If you haven't, that one's a pretty funny one if you like funny pirate books. I also read Peter Pan and I read The Pirate Substitute. Oh, how was that one? Did you like that book? Uh-huh. I might have to add that one to my reading list. I have not read that one. Okay, so what's next? Yep, that's what I was going to say, Miss Jessica. Does it look like uh, we've got a lot of discussion on that? So if we could move forward one. We sure will. Hold on, I had to close the chat. <laughs> so we're going to move on and talk about water safety. All right, so it says water safety. Number one, swim as a pair or near a lifeguard's, cha uh, lifeguard's chair, that means that you need to swim with a buddy. 
or even if they're not in the water with you, but they're on the shore to keep a watch out on you. And you need to swim near the lifeguard's chair so they can keep a closer eye as you're swimming. Not all places have um, a lifeguard, but if they do, it is a good idea to stay near them. Some pools have lifeguards and even some beaches have a lifeguard stand. Naomi just said that her sister has read about Blackbeard. Sorry, I got distracted with reading that, but that was neat. All right, number two, look before you leap. So you never know if it's if you're at a place that you've never swam before, how deep the water is. So you should be, uh, you should test the water or just not swim in it if you don't know how deep it is. There could be trees or stumps or tires or just about anything in the water and you don't wanna jump in if you don't know what's in the water. So you should check and if you're at your swimming pool, you should check below you before you jump in to make sure no one's swimming underneath underneath you or where you're gonna jump in. And always make sure the water's deep enough before you jump in that pool. It's always, uh, we always have, um, sometimes the pools that have slides, uh, we always have to remind the kids to wait till the person is swims away from the slide at the end before you go down or you'll swim right on top of them. Yep. Uh, next one is think so you don't sink. This one's for if you get in trouble while you're in the water. So you're swimming along and you fall off your raft or your tubey. Um, you should stay calm and think, what can you do? So one thing you could do is flip over and float on your back if you know how to float on your back or tread water if you know how to tread water. But you gotta stay calm and think to figure out how to get out of your situation. Number four is reach or throw, don't go. What they mean by that is don't jump in to try to save someone because if they're panicking, they could take you under as well or drown you. So what we want you to do instead is, number one, call, so, let someone know that they're in trouble, call for help. And then if you can get something to reach to them or throw to them so that they can um, grab a hold of that to keep themselves afloat, that would be great. And it, for instance, you could give them a, po a pool noodle, reach a pool noodle to them so they could grab a hold of that or another floaty so they can grab a hold and not uh, sink in the water. Number five, don't just pack it, wear your jacket. So if you're going out on a boat or going out in the water and you need a life jacket, don't just carry it, go ahead and put it on and wear it. Number six, too much sun is no fun. Everyone likes to play outside, but even on cloudy days, you can get too much sun. You can get sunburned. So it's a good idea to put on some sunblock or wear a thin long sleeve shirt or a hat on your head so that you can keep the sun off your face and off your head. And the long sleeve shirt helps with the sun on your arms, but sunblock will also help with all those things as well. And just remember, like I said, even on a cloudy day, you can get sunburned. Number seven, in your house and in your yard, watch for water, be on guard. That means that if you're outside playing and there's a pool nearby, you need to be careful um, that you don't fall in if you're not swimming at that time or someone's not out there with you. And look out for your younger siblings or younger friends so that they don't fall in, okay, or get in trouble around water that they shouldn't be in at the time. And the last one is wave, tide, or rod. Follow the guide. What does that mean? That means whether you're at the lake, the river, the pool, a water park, you should always read the signs and listen to any lifeguards if they're around, okay? Got to know the rules so you know what to look out for and what you need to do while you're there so that you can play safely in the water. Has any, 
Miss Leslie, have you ever been to a water park? That's what I was going to ask you, Miss Jessica. I have been to a water park and it is so much fun, but I have not been this year. This COVID has I don't kept think us at home. It has. I would love to go to, I wonder if any of the kids have gone to a water park. Oh, we have Alicia raised her hand. I did. You did? Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy the water park? Mm-hmm, and there was a big waterfall. There was a big waterfall? What was your favorite part, Alicia? The waterfall or anything else? I think Alicia's gone. Uh, let's see, Sydney says that yes, they've been to the water park, Naomi. Nathaniel says we went to a lake this morning and threw rocks in. How cool. Addison has her hand raised. Addison? Oh. Hi, Addison. It looks like your mic is on. Try talking. She is really far away from wherever her microphone is. Addison, you're really far. Can you hear her now? You guys are really, really soft. Can you hear her now? Is it okay? Much louder. Okay. All right, Addie. Let's go tell her. I've been to a water park in the pool. What we could hear is she's been to a water park. Okay. I don't know what's wrong. Sometimes our microphones aren't built to have the amplification. Sometimes you have to go into the system and actually make it louder. Oh, it looks like Ranger's been to a water park. Uh... Natalie went down a water spot slide. Can you hear now? <laughs> Only if she shouts really loud. Use your playground voice. Okay, use your playground voice, Addie. Hello. <laughs> we heard the hello. You use that playground voice. Let's hear it. You went to a water park. What did you do? I went um, in the fall. The waterfall. A waterfall. That is very cool, Addison. We're going to hope the next time we speak to you, we can hear you a lot louder. Nafi, have you been to a water park? Try holding down your space bar. There you go. Okay. And I went to a water park. What did you do at the water park? I was sliding. Sliding is lots of fun. Yeah, and it was fun. It had a loop de loop. I was kind of scared of loop de loops. Oh, it had a slide with a loop de loop? Yeah, and then, and then I went up to the roof. Oh, you went down a really tall slide? Yeah, it was long and then and then and then my slide I went in the water. Did you ride in a tube or did you just slide down without a tube or a mat? Um it was it was it was like a tunnel. It had a circle and it had a cover. Oh, so it's like a covered slide. That sounds like a lot of fun. Like, like our house is, like our house has a cover to protect us from tornadoes. You're right, it does. Did you bring sunscreen to the water park? Sunscreen? Oh my didn't That's... need to. There was no, there was no sun. Was it indoors? Indoors, yep. Oh, an indoor water, I've never been to an indoor water park. 
Yeah, but last time I saw a big water park that was dangerous for me, and that was scary for me. And when I signed up, it was very deep, 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 and then I and then it's a grown up and it's very large. Yeah. Well, you're right. Some slides um, they have height requirements, and some are for um, different size children, and some are for adults. And so you should do the water slides that are right for you. Well, I did it. It wasn't that big. It was. It was. It was short. It was that one was right for me. It was short. Well, thank you, Nafi. We're going to let Ingrid tell us if she's been to a water park. Ingrid, have you been to a water park? We had a pool where you just sat in and splash, but... but so you had a splash pool? Yes, I don't, it's not. It's gone now. Oh. Did you what do you like you to play it? with in your pool? Um, it was a long time ago. I last time the only time I remember playing is I didn't really play in it. I, well, thank you, Ranger. What about you? Okay, they can hear you. I've been to a wall ride. A water ride? Slide. Oh, a water slide. Oh, you've been on a water slide? Did you like it? Yeah, it was uh, on the Mickey boat. He went on a did Disney you, cruise. I was about to ask, did you go on a cruise? That's really cool. No, what, what kind it was? What kind? A roller coaster. The roller coaster water slide. Oh, was it big? Why, mommy? Did you think it was big? I thought the boat was big. <laughs> yes, the boat was big. <laughs> Your boat was probably as big as a pirate ship, if not bigger. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to let you guys get back. Sorry. Somehow when I go on here, I, I mess up the order when I'm clicking. Right. I, I click too much. So we're going to listen to a story, and it's going to tell us a lot of details about boats. Um, Miss Leslie's going to read it to us, and we're going to look at the pictures. But if you hear a word or you have a question while we're listening to about these boats, then feel free to like write in the chat. Like if there's a word you don't know or you want us to explain something more, just go ahead and we'll do our best to get to those. All right, the name of our story is Brilliant Boat by Tony Mitten and Aunt Parker. Parker. She put her finger in the way. And they open up the book and it says Brilliant Boats and it has a boat on the front that is a smaller boat, maybe for a few friends. Brilliant Boats by Tony Mitten and Aunt Parker. It shows the boat and it shows three friends. One looks to be a type of bird, and then the other one is a mouse. And I don't know if the other one is a kangaroo or what it is, but the boat is tied up onto a post. So one of them is holding a rope and the other, the other one has an oars in their hands so they can paddle the boat if needed. And they, you know what all three of them have on? They all three have on life jackets. It's a good thing to have on when you're out on a boat never know what might happen. So the three friends are out on three different boats. So we see Buzzy, which is a, evidently a, the type of bird. He's in his boat 
and he's got a he's in a white boat it has a red flag at the end and his name is on the boat it says fuzzy our other friend the mouse is lucy sitting in her boat with oars because she's got to row her boat and it says slip slop and the other guy is in a sailboat with a big yellow sail an orange boat and it's called sea breeze it says boats are really brilliant for sailing us around they travel through the water with a sloppy slappy sound it's fun to go out boating especially in the sun the water's cool and sparkly, so come on, everyone. Just playing with their three boats in the water. And now we see them all in one boat, a big yellow boat that the mouse is rolling up the anchor and they all three still have on their life jackets and the little bird, he's going to be the captain. So he's steering the boat. It says a boat sits on the water like an empty cup or bowl. It's hollow and it's full of air and that's what, what keeps it up. So it's got to be hollow and full of air. It's going to be light enough to float on the, the water. It says an anchor holds you steady when you're bobbing in a bay. You wind, wind a chain to raise it when you want to sail away. So you drop your anchor or roll it down with the chain so that it can drop down if you want to stay in one spot. But when you get ready to, to go, you have to reel it up and bring it up. So an anchor must be really, really heavy. It would have to be to hold their boat where you want it to be, huh? Definitely. Now we have four friends on a sailboat. So this sailboat has two big sails. It's got a dog friend with a blue and white shirt and a hat on, so he must be the captain. And the other guys, the bird, the mouse, and the kangaroo looking, Jessica, go back please. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. I was reading myself. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, and so our little, uh, he looks like a, um, what did I say, kangaroo? He is pulling on a rope that is attached to the sails. The sails are there so that they can catch the wind and the wind is what powers the boat. And the little bird, he's pulling on another uh, rope and our little mouse friend's pulling on another rope and it says, aye, aye, captain. Aye, aye means, yes, I hear you, sir. Or yes, I hear you, captain. It says over lakes and seas and rivers, wind blows very strong. Some boats have sails to catch it, so it pushes them along. To manage boats with masts and sails, you need a clever crew. Clever meaning you gotta have people that know what they're doing so they can pull the sails at the right time. The captain is the one in charge who tells them what to do. So the captain's telling them, pull this sail at this time or let that wind go some so that he can keep the boat moving. There's uh, Ingrid, they're switching boats so that we can see all the different types of boats that you can use in the water. And so in this picture, in the distance, you have the boat that um, is white and red that they were all on uh, together when they had their life jackets, when the three friends, the kangaroo, the bird and the mouse were on the boat. It's out there and they've got it anchored okay. down and our friends uh, the mouse the bird and the kangaroo are, 
are leaving that boat to go to the shore to have a picnic. And so what we see is Mouse is rowing his rowboat and the little bird is now in a rubber boat. Hmm, I've seen those before. A blow up boat like you use to play in your pool or um, out on the river or out in the water. And it shows kangaroo sitting on the beach or the shore and he's eating a snack. He's got a picnic and he's got a ball and he's taking his life jacket off while he's eating, but everyone else still has on their life jacket. Okay, and it says a dinghy or a rowing boat is useful near the shore because those big boats that have to have an anchor, they're, they have uh, large pieces down in the water. They're still part of the boat down in the water. If it gets too close to the, um, to the land, it gets caught. So that's why you got to have a little smaller boat to get you from the big boat to the land. And it says, you make it travel backwards by pulling on each oar. So if you pull both the oars at one time, you can make it go back. And if you row it the other way, you can go forward. So you control the boat and the way that you paddle it. And that's all our quotes too. We're ready to go, Miss Jessica. Oh my goodness. All right, now it looks like they are in what's called motor boats or speed boats. And so the one that the little bird friend is in is red and it's called a red arrow. And he's got a yellow flag at the end that is triangular and his boat is going whoosh. And he's going pretty fast and he's got his life jacket on. He's the only one in his boat. And the other boat is the little mouse friend and the kangaroo friend and their boat is yellow with a yellow flag, square flag with a red corner on it. And in the distance in this picture, you see um, a boat with someone skiing behind it. So they're water skiing. So the boat is pulling them with a rope that goes out to the person and the person is on skis. Our reading says, a motorboat is powered by propeller from the back. It whooshes through the water and leaves a foamy track. So it leaves the uh, lots of bubbles and white looking stuff behind the boat, but it goes away once the boat moves on. Yes, Miss Jessica. I was going to say that a propeller is a lot like a fan, like the fans we have on our ceiling or the fans that we have um, maybe on our tabletop where the blades of the fan spin in a circle. Or this are our fans do air, but these propellers go in the water and spin the water fast, right? Right. And have you seen the little uh, pinwheels that you blow with your mouth or you blow and they spin? Uh, that's how a propeller spins, but it spins in the water. All right. And then just in case by accident you tumble from the boat. <laughs> You're welcome. You have to wear a life jacket made to help you float. And I think we talked about that earlier. Make sure you have your life jacket on. You never know what might happen. Well, here where we live, um, you have to, you'll get in trouble if you're not wearing a life jacket. If you're in a canoe or a boat or a rowboat, it doesn't matter. If you're under the age of 12, you have to have on a life jacket. Great idea. All right. Oh, wow. Now they're out in the water on boats and our three friends are in a red and white boat called the Happy Halibut. And they have these fishing nets or big nets they've thrown in the water and it has fish in them. So they're out catching fish. And our kangaroo friend, he's the one with the big net reeling in these fish. Our mouse friend, has a small net in his hand and he's gonna help get the, the fish, I'm sure. There is our bird friend in the front and all three of our friends have on yellow raincoats and yellow rain hats. 
and there's a little seabird on top of the boat. And in the distance, you see another fishing boat. This one is green and there's two friends on it and they have their fishing net out in the water. It says some boats go out fishing where the ocean Are waves. Go ahead, Ms. Jessica. First. Oh, I was just gonna ask why they were all in rain gear. I was gonna talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking it's because they're going to get wet because when you pull in all I those fish so. and they're going to come with lots of water and you're going to get wet when that comes in. So it says some boats go out fishing where the ocean waves are steep. Their nets are cast to catch the fish, then haul them from the deep. So when they haul them up out of the water, they're going to get wet. So the word steep, does that mean the waves are really, really big? Yes, because they're probably way out in the ocean. And so that boat is very um, tilted in the water right now because the waves are coming in and moving the, moving the water, uh, moving that boat around. So the water has to be really deep for them to be out there fishing like that with the net. I wonder if they catch crabs or um, shrimp while they're out there doing that. But they catch whatever gets in that net. Oh, I hope they catch tuna. Tuna's my favorite. Now we see large ships, or what we call cargo ships, um, out at a dock. A dock is back on land. It's the area where the boats come up so they can unload what they have on them onto the land. And so they're out on a deck and our three friends are, one is using a pulley system to pull up a big heavy crate up out of the ship so they can put it on the land. And our little bird friend, he's helping with one of the ropes. Our little mouse friend, he's back on the ship. He's helping get the, the straps on it so that it can get moved. And so we see lots of boxes and barrels up on the dock where they've taken them off the ship or they're putting them on. I'm not sure which direction they're actually going. And out in the distance, you see another big cargo ship, which is very, very long. And we see a lighthouse. A lighthouse is a big tower with a light on top that helps guide ships so they know where the land is because at night they may not um, know where land is because everything is dark. And we also see another little tugboat or another little boat out in the water that is smaller than everybody else or smaller than the cargo ships. And I don't, oh, I do see one little person in there. It's very tiny. And our reading says a ship can carry cargo, which is loaded at the docks. Hup ho, look out below. Here comes a giant box. That's what they're saying as they are bringing the box up. Oh, wow. Next, we're going to learn about a ferry boat. A ferry carries cars and trucks where they need to go. The people travel up above and the vehicles stay below. So a ferry is a big ship that you drive your cars on. And then once you get on the ferry, some of them, you can get out of your car and go up to the next level, like the upstairs that we talked that Ms. Jessica talked about before. You can be on the top of the boat and you can stand up there while it takes you from one side of the water to the other side. So if there's not a bridge to go over, you would have to take a ferry. And in the distance, you see another ferry boat or another ship saying toot toot or honking their horn back at the other ship and you see a lighthouse. Hey, we had a friend on one of these ships, didn't we? We did. They took a Disney cruise, right? They sure did. All right. This is a big old cruise ship and it's called Ocean Wave. 
it's red and white and you can see at the back of the boat they uh they have a swimming pool and our friends the kangaroo the mouse and the bird are hanging out at the pool and at the front of the ship you see the sailors and they're uh, scrubbing the deck or washing the the deck of the boat and other people or the ship excuse me and the other people are walking around this boat has one, two, three levels above the water. Um, and it looks like it has some levels below because it's got some portholes or little windows to be seen out of if you're below deck. It says a mighty ocean liner has a big and busy crew. It carries many passengers there. They are waving now. Yoo-hoo! The ship has cozy cabins where the passengers can stay and out on deck, they stroll about and watch the sea or play. So in this boat, you can stay down in your cabin or you can be out on the top. I bet that sounds just like the Disney cruise. And here we go. Our cruise ship is docking, it says, but then the journey's over. Ahoy, the lighthouse rock. So in the distance, you see the lighthouse with rocks around it. The lighthouse is to let the ships know that there's rocks or land there. It says a ship glides into harbor and ties up at the dock. And so the sailors have thrown the rope down to another sailor and he's tying it, the boat up onto these big cement round pegs, for lack of a better word. And they're going to tie the boat up so the boat doesn't um, float away. And then there are some people, the hippo, a, a bird, and another mouse that says, welcome home. All right. And then on our next page, we have boat bits. So this is some information about boats. So it says a lighthouse. This is a tall building on the coast with a flashing light that guides ships and keeps them away from rocks. Remember I told you it's a, it's a round building that you can walk up the steps in there. And you have, uh, you go high up in the, in there. I think they're like mm, at least 12 to 15 feet tall and they have a light at the top. An anchor. This is a very heavy piece of metal with hooks which dig into the ground under the water to stop the boat from drifting away. We talked about oars. Oars, these are used as long paddles with flat blades at the end, which push against the water uh, to move the boat forward. Cargo, it's the ship all the stuff that the goods that you have on the boat. So your cargo is um, boxes or it could be cars, it could be all kinds of different things. We talked about propellers already, so I won't go into that. The deck of the ship, this is the floor of a boat. So it's the top area and cabins are found down below and their name is on the uh, front of the boat and sometimes on the back. That was a cool story about boats, Miss Jessica. We got to learn about all different kinds. I don't know how that went up. Not what I was trying to do. So moving forward, we were going to talk about your activity for today. So did anybody get to make any sailboats today? If you did, raise your hand or put it in the chats for us. Alicia's raised her hand. Yes, Alicia. Press the space bar, Alicia. In the story, I raised my hand because of um, when we heard the um, cruise. I was going to ask that my brother went on a cruise before. Oh, how cool. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, the cruise ships are really big boats. Ranger? Yes, I made a dope boat. Nice. Wow. Did it float? Yep. Great I job. I made two picks, a cupcake wrangle, and a poodle. That was a smart idea, Ranger. Okay. Well, that was a neat one. Risa? Did you make one? Yes. Risa said she made one. How cool. Oh, you know, I like to make a bunch of them and then race them in my bathtub. Ingrid, did you make one? Um, no, but how do you make them float? Make it without making them, without making the paper wet. Ah, Jessica cool. Leslie, how do you make it so that the paper doesn't get wet? So you're right. The paper will get wet unless you use a uh, plastic paper, like a really thin plastic, or I'll give you a really good secret. If you use like cut up a chip bag and make a big triangle out of the chip bag, that kind of, um, that, that won't get wet and <laughs> the boat will still float. It'll get wet, it just won't make the paper fall apart. And it sounds like somebody used a pool noodle for their bottom of their boat, which would float. And the project that Jessica and Leslie put together was talking about using a sponge, which floats. Mm -hmm. I know we're running out of time and I am sure we would like to do the song before we end. So would you be willing to stop sharing your screen so we can do the song? Sure. All right, are we ready? I think we're ready. All right, here we go, guys. Remember, we're going to the tune of Old MacDonald. So, but we're gonna be Miss McNeil. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a shark, E-I-E-I-O. With a, remember, put your arms out to do the chomp. With a chomp, chomp here, and a chomp, chomp there. Here a chomp, there a chomp, everywhere a chomp, chomp. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a crab, E-I-E-I-O. Which pincher's ready? With a pinch, pinch here and a pinch, pinch there. Here a pinch, there a pinch, everywhere a pinch, pinch. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a well, E-I-E-I-O. Get ready for your stops, guys. With a stop, stop here and a stop, stop there. Here, stop, there, stop, everywhere, stop, stop. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Now we're gonna do the seahorse. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. And in her ocean, she had a seahorse, E-I-E-I-O. With a jump, jump here, and a jump, jump there. Here a jump, there a jump, everywhere a jump, jump. Miss McNeil had an ocean, E-I-E-I-O. Had a great day, guys. I hope you enjoyed the song and the stories. So what is tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going on a beach trip. Yay, I can't wait. Okay, we will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.